Found in the waters near the Mistlands biome, pufferfish cause poison damage on contact. This made me wonder which bosses they could be used to kill. Well, there are three bosses not immune to poison damage, Ikthyr, Moda, and the Queen. In this video, I try to kill each of them without weapons, shields, or armor, bringing only some potions to the battle, along with a whole heap of pufferfish. Dying meant that I had to restart the battle. I spent over 50 hours doing this stupid challenge and I died way too many times, so I really hope you enjoy this more than I did. For Ikthyr, the approach was super simple. Drop the pufferfish, summon the boss, and try to get him to run through the pile of neurotoxins. Something important to notice is that you get poisoned just by dropping the pufferfish. This meant that I needed to take a poison resist potion just to survive. Even with such a potion, the poison damage prevents you from dropping the pufferfish for more than a few seconds. The key to this battle is to conserve stamina for when it is really needed. Ikthyr is quite fast, but he does stop before attacking, so you can use this time to try and make him run through the middle of the pufferfish. Even though getting hit by a single attack meant certain death, I managed to win on the first try. The first try. I was worried about Moda because she spends so much time flying. Even so, I started with the same strategy, trying to dodge her attacks while she was in the air and staying close to the pufferfish to maximize the chance that she would land nearby. A few attempts in, and this sound started to piss me off. Having to dodge the drake's attacks while also trying to keep an eye on Moda was terrible. I gave this strategy a few more tries, but each time it ended the same way. The biggest issue was just how little damage the pufferfish actually do. All bosses regenerate health, and in Moda's case, if she spends a couple of minutes flying or on the ground away from the pufferfish, she will end up completely healed. It was extremely frustrating because I couldn't control where exactly she would land each time. Even with a shield and armor, I think this approach would still be almost impossible, so I tried to find another strategy instead. I wanted to find a way to cheese the AI and get Moda to always land in the same spot. The only idea that I could come up with involved finding a frost cave. Maybe not that one. Luckily, there was a second cave nearby. This was promising. Most of the time she would land on top of the cave's entrance, and I was protected from a lot of her attacks. If I really needed to, I could always enter the cave to avoid damage. So, the new and improved plan was to drop the pufferfish on top of the frost cave, lure her nearby, and hide at the entrance. On most tries, her health would go down for the first 10 or 20 minutes, but then it would start to regenerate. My guess is that she knocks some of the pufferfish out of her way. All I know for certain is that this meant I had to restart a lot. Overall, waiting here was just pure boredom mixed in with the occasional moment of horror. After a lot more trying, I thought I finally had done it. Things were going smoothly, until one point where I noticed that her health had stopped going down. I checked and the pufferfish were gone. I did some research, and I found that items on the ground will despawn after an hour. But, building certain structures can stop this from happening. Based on the rules I'd given myself, starting the battle with only pufferfish and potions, it seemed the best choice for a structure to build was a campfire. This is because the hammer and campfire both only require wood and stone to make. I knew that I could get both of these resources by making Moda attack the nearby trees and rocks. It wasn't that easy though. It extended the setup for each attempt, and it also caused me to die in a lot of dumb ways that I'm not too proud of.
With this new setup, eventually I had the perfect start. Getting the wooden stone was easy, and pretty much every time Moda landed on the pufferfish. This meant that something had to go wrong, and of course, it did. Yep, the laugh that makes me irrationally angry. I hoped he'd just leave me alone, but... I wasn't too worried though, because in other attempts I'd found that hiding in the frost cave for just one minute was usually enough to make the enemies leave the entrance. Knowing that until now this had been going flawlessly, I decided to wait a little longer. But at the same time, I knew that Moda's health was regenerating, so eventually I crossed my fingers and left the cave. <laughs> Don't laugh, you fu- After a couple of days of quiet and calm contemplation, I tried again, and this time with some moral support. While this run wasn't as good, on the whole, Moda's health still was going down. The problem was that the longer that this went on for, the less often she took damage. This time though, I wasn't going to give up. I started to move around more in the hopes that it would make her more likely to land on the pufferfish. It was a little risky and I don't know how much it helped, but after two excruciating hours, the moment finally arrived. By the way, if you hate yourself, you can find the full two hour video of this linked in the description. For the queen, I already had a plan in mind. In a previous video, I managed to defeat her by exploiting the fact that she and her minions won't go into the entrance room. So, I dropped the pufferfish just outside that room and lured her over so that she got stuck on the outside, taking damage. Now, the problem is that if you stay in the room for too long, she will leave and you'll need to lure her back. She has more health and faster regeneration than Moda, so I knew any time she wasn't taking damage would be costly. To stop her from wandering off, I ran side to side, momentarily leaving the entrance room. The thing is, doing this can trigger her attack, which can hit you through the wall. It's hard to know when to dodge roll because you can't see the attack. More attempts and you can imagine that I wasn't even getting close with this plan. So I decided to flip things around. Instead of trying to lure her to the puffer fish, I wanted to bring the puffer fish to her. I noticed that when you hide in the entrance room for too long and she loses interest, she will eventually walk back upstairs. So what would happen if I just dropped the puffer fish up there? This was tough to do because I didn't have the time to drop enough puffer fish. And when I'd started, I was committed. But there was something that could help. Sometimes when the Seeker Broods die, they drop royal jelly which is edible. Eating this will allow you to slowly regenerate health, and if you wait long enough, drop the pufferfish multiple times. It was more time consuming, but I thought it was worth trying. And it made for a better montage. After a lot more tries, I had the best run, where I managed to drop a ton of puffer fish over the course of 10 minutes. If this plan was ever going to work, this would be it. The queen followed me as I ran back to the entrance to wait. A few minutes of waiting, and the queen must have gone back upstairs, as her health had started to drop. 
30 minutes later and nothing. Well, it turns out there are a few problems. The queen for the most part will avoid the puffer fish and also can accidentally knock them away. Worst of all, the puffer fish upstairs do despawn. This was a much bigger problem than with Moda because I can't get resources to build a campfire in here. Thankfully, I noticed the puffer fish that got knocked downstairs was still there. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's to do with their proximity to the entrance. So, here's the problem. The puffer fish must be near the entrance or they'll despawn. Therefore, we need to keep the queen at the entrance. Now, if we stay in the entrance room for too long, the queen will leave. But, leaving the room to keep her around is also too dangerous. I could only think of one plan, and admittedly it wasn't great. You may have noticed that I've used pufferfish of different sizes. Well, it seems that the AI is better at avoiding the larger pufferfish, and is more likely to take damage from the smaller ones. So, the plan was to lure the queen into the corner while we stand near the entrance. Then we can trap her in by pushing across a wall of large pufferfish while the small ones poison her. The first step was to kill some seeker broods. I needed the royal jelly because it took time to set up the trap correctly. On one hand, I had to leave space for the queen to be able to get into the corner, but at the same time, I needed to drop enough pufferfish to ensure that she would constantly take damage. After the trap was set, I went upstairs to get the queen and lure her to the entrance room. As you can imagine, you could die at every step of the way, but the worst was when trying to push the wall of pufferfish to trap her in. Do it too soon and she would escape. Too late and she would probably kill you. I was close to giving up. It could take up to 10 minutes per try and I died a lot doing this. But I still didn't have any better ideas, so I tried once more. First attempt and... <laughs> Not even close. I picked up the pufferfish to try again. I noticed that my poison resist potion was fast running out. And the second try was just as bad as the first. I was in the infantry getting ready for one last go when this opportunity just presented itself. I have no idea how this did not hit me. All I know is that Odin was watching over me that day. Still, this wasn't over. While I could see that she was standing still taking damage, I knew that at any moment she might just knock the pufferfish out of the way and escape. There was still a long way to go. 30 minutes later, and... It seemed like it was going well. In fact, it was pretty much perfect. And just like with motor and the fueling, this meant that something was probably about to go wrong. And of course, it did. Mm, it, it didn't. Things were perfect. I couldn't believe it, but it seemed like it actually worked. The queen just stood still and took the poison damage like a champ. I'm guessing the neurotoxins had started to kick in. Over an hour and a half of standing still doing absolutely nothing and look at that wall of pufferfish no wonder Valheim's strongest boss could not break out again you can watch the whole video of this linked in the description but it's pretty much just an hour and a half of me standing still so what have we learned today can you beat Ike the Emota and the Queen using pufferfish instead of weapons? Yes. Should you? Nah. Definitely not.